Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy. Uh, wait, did I close? I closed that. Okay, here we go. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy, the babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Grand Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with, and we definitely need some more of that because the meta right now is a little bit stale i've tried to experiment with a lot of things but uh, in the vein of if you can't beat them join them today we're going to be talking about an elf guardian deck but it it's me it's me it's trophy nut so we're going to do something special we're going to do something very meme -y, and today we're going to be playing with the triple angoulême deck so if you're wondering, yes, I really, really like Angoulême as a card. I think I've, over the years, I've made multiple decks containing her, even when she wasn't really viable. But uh, these days, she actually is really, really viable. Especially with the location cards that have been introduced in the Way of the Witcher expansion, she's become a powerhouse. So, again, if you don't know what, Ang what Angoulême is capable of, on deploy, she spawns and plays a random artifact from your opponent's starting deck. So if your opponent has an artifact in their starting deck, Angoulême will play a copy of this on your side of the field. Now, this deck is called the Triple Angoulême deck. So this obviously means that we can play Angoulême three times. We can do that even more than that, but just with this deck, so if we don't have any dependencies from our opponent, we can do it three times. Now, how are we going to do this? Angoulême, when you just play her, that's the first time. When you played her, she's actually pretty low in um, power. She only has three power. So Decoy is one of my new favorite cards. I've been trying this out in a lot of new decks um, because Decoy just allows you to play low power but very strong ability cards again if you want to. So Decoy will shuffle an allied unit on the battlefield into our deck again and then play the top unit from our deck. The second part, you can also um, try to fix what you're going to get with Yennefer's Invocation beforehand. So it's a new way of getting the top card from your deck. But uh, just the added benefit from Decoy is that we can shuffle a card from our board back into our deck for later use. So for example, if we do that with, uh, with Angoulême, we can actually pull her again with Oneiromancy in the same turn or just, um, well, not in the same turn, the next turn, but in the same round. Or if you wanna just hold off and you did that in the first round, you can just draw her again in the next drawing phase. So that's the second part. Where's the third part coming in? Of course, we also have Asire or As Asire, As I don't know how to pronounce her name, but her ability is that you can shuffle a card from your graveyard back into your deck. So if you do that with Angoulême, who is dead, dead at, this, at this point, so if she's been destroyed by your opponent or you played her in the first round and now she's just lying there in the graveyard, you can put her back in the deck and then play her again using Oneiromancy again. So Oneiromancy again, very important card in this deck because you can shuffle around with that. But all these tools also allow you to play any of these cards in this deck three times. So uh, that's also very interesting because there's a lot of Vi decks uh, or V decks, I should say, in the meta right now. You uh, have Traherne in this deck as well. So it looks at the top three cards from your opponent's deck and moves one to their graveyard. If you manage to pull that off with V, he's removed from the game permanently because usually those decks don't have a way of getting V back. Um, and Traherne, you can also play again if you want to decoy him and use them later again it's just to try and get that uh, v out of the deck but let's quickly go through the rest of this deck because it is still an assimilate deck because of course if i play a nilf card it's going to be an assimilate deck um so we have the classics here so i put in a double art Fane heavy cavalry because of the fact that we have angoulême if you phase another nilf guardian deck that is running portal you will get the benefit from portal as well because you have two four provision bronzes in your deck so try to keep them out of your hand if you play against nilf card and you're expecting a portal card because you'll be pulling them out that way then Attorney Joust, just for some removal. Double Duchess Informant to copy uh, your opponent's bronze cards. Double Imperial Diviner, getting rid of defender statuses and stuff like that. Purifying is always very handy, especially if that comes with Assimilate. Um, then the Slave Hunter, also Assimilate and on order damages an enemy unit by two. A quick assassination, another big removal card. Um, Roderick of Duntine. I've added this at a later stage in the deck building. Um, not per se for his effect, but for the fact that he's an aristocrat. Um, I don't have a lot of aristocrats in this deck, because even Traherne is just an agent and not an aristocrat. But if you're facing Nilfgaard, which 
happens quite a lot. You can actually pull um, Masquerade Ball, but we don't really have a lot of Aristocrats in this deck. So Roderick is one Aristocrat that is in this deck. It's, I think, the only one that I've included, because otherwise the other Aristocrats don't really fit into the Assimilate archetype. Uh, we just talked about Treherin. Vanamar is very important to use in conjunction with your leader ability, which is Imposter, where you can lock an enemy unit and then spawn a copy of that unit on your side of the field and boost it by two. Um, it's an easy way to just destroy a big um, powerful unit on the other side, so especially powerful against V as well. Likewise for Peter Sark um he's gonna reset the power of unit just back to its base power, so if you do that on a boosted um, Akimara, then you'll get that those uh, V points out of the way as well. Decoy we talked about, then Cantarella, another quick way of getting rid of V if you're lucky. Um, I didn't put in, uh, what's his name? I didn't put in Warrit, so the Warrit the All-Seeing, which would allow you to make better use of Cantarella, but against V, um, they always have a way of getting that V back out from the deck, so you need two turns to be able to do this, and this doesn't usually work against uh, monster decks. Against Nilf Guardian decks, likewise, they have ways of getting the top cards from their own deck, so I wouldn't recommend it. And it's an, it's an option if you shuffle around the provisions a bit to put a Warrit in, uh, instead of, for example, if you just get rid of the Tony Shielmar, which is one of my favorite cards, so that's why it's in there. But you can swap that out if you want to have Warrit in instead, because Warrit is definitely still a powerful card if you manage to pull off the combo with Cantarella, but it doesn't always happen. Then Glynis, of course, Assimilate 2 is a card that we can't omit as Sire, we just talked about Artorius Vigo, Assimilate, and with this setup you have a 75% chance to get a Duchess Informant out and then copy another unit, so you trigger Assimilate twice. Tourney Shielmar, always in Assimilate, it is very powerful. I keep getting comments about this that it isn't. But, I mean, against Nilfgaard, it's 7 damage guaranteed. Against anything else, you just boost yourself by 2 for every allied unit from a different faction. So every unit you copied, especially against monsters, with those Andrega Larva and the copy you get from the uh, Nightmare uh, scenario, it's just so much points on one single card. You can easily get Tourney Shielmar uh, above 20 if you want to. Then Coup de Grasse, um, very powerful card. Damage an enemy unit by three, and if you kill it, you copy um, the card and play it on your side uh, again. Um, and if you do that on a spying unit, you trigger that ability anyway. But very powerful, with a bit of removal, you can actually get some really powerful cards on your side of the board, or just replay Gandarella or the Duchess Informants. That also works very well. Yennefer's Invocation, again, tall removal and puts it on your uh, deck on top of it, so you know what you're going to pull with Decoy. Um, then Angoulême. I mean, needs no introduction. We know what she's gonna do, and we're gonna display that in a minute. Um, and then Bratons, of course, also a very powerful assimilate card, which uh, allows you to create and play a bronze disloyal unit from your starting deck. And this is always going to be the Duchess Informant. I've not added any more bronzes because this setup, I only have four unique uh, bronze cards. So we are almost certain to get a Duchess Informant for Artoria. So that's mainly the reason why I put this deck up like this. And then Imposter we just talked about as well. Try to uh, combine that with a powerful unit and then destroy it with Vanamar. And Color is another lock if you would need any. So uh, that's the triple Angoulême deck. Bit of a meme deck, but very very powerful in the current meta. So let's try and show this off. And we're facing Northern Realms, a mobilization stat. Actually gels pretty well with the, um, the Assimilate archetype, but I don't know if they're going to be playing an, uh, uh, an artifact here. So that's going to maybe be annoying. Um, Turning Chess, I should probably keep the removal. I probably also don't need to purify anything, so let's just do this, and we get Decoy. We don't have an Aeromancy, but we do have a few other interesting bits and pieces. So let's start off with the Slave Hunter. Always a good start, because you can damage something, especially if you have Coup de Gras, and take that out if you want to. And just grab that, because some of these cards are really, really powerful. And we get a Redanian Archer as a start. I don't like Redanian Archers. So we're just gonna tur turn it just that one. There we go. Yeah, we need a bit of removal for Northern Realms. It's probably gonna be just the archers and the Kedweni Revenants. 
and we get Ronvit after that. Okay. For this most beautiful of maidens, That's not a bronze card, so I might as well just grab something with Cantarella. Might be very juicy. And we get the Oneromancy. That is very, very good. Um, now that we have Oneromancy, what do we want to use it for? I think I'm just going to use it for another uh, Slave Hunter. So we can just play that right next to the other one. And leave it like that. So right if it's Royal Guards. We could actually grab that if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, could of Grass right now is probably better spent on Cantarella again. Just to thin out their deck a little bit, I want to see what they're using here. Um, and we get... Ooh. I'm not actually going to use that as it's intended, so I'm just going to put it over there. But that was one of their stronger cards again. Um, and now we can actually just take out the Radovitz Royal Guards so they don't get that extra two points boost. Good, good. I don't have any bronze units now to take, but yeah, it doesn't really matter, I suppose. Banish a card from your opponent's graveyard. That's going to be on Aramans, your Coup de Grasse. They took Coup de Grasse. Okay. I don't really need to overplay this now. I could... Jennifer's Invocation back the Cantarella. <laughs> that would be even wilder. Um, did they actually spend any Echo cards just yet? No, not yet. I think I'm just going to use Assassination then. Um, there's not much else I can do. Um, some of this unit from a grave out to a random ally. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. I could have locked it, but I don't think, because it's not a Death Wish ability, I don't think it will stay locked in the graveyard, so that ability will happen nonetheless. Okay. That's that. And that's the first round for us rather easily. We didn't even spend some of our bigger cards. And we still have Imposter, we still have Angoulême, although I... I mean, unless they're playing Siege... I'm guessing they're not. I still have Onairomancy in my hand, so I could play Angoulême whenever I want to. If I can get my own Onairomancy, because that's also something that I don't yet have, that would be rather nice. Um, Roderick is actually not that useful at the moment, since I don't have Coup de Grasse anymore. Do I have anything in the graveyard I want to get back? Not really. And I mean, double Onairomancy would be really nice. Our opponents, what a, they don't really have any hand boosting, do they now? So I'd rather go into the final round without card. Well, with, with, with just equal cards, so I'll just pass. I could have pushed probably, and then they're going with Amphibious Assault. Makes sense. The other Echo cards. And then they have that, okay. But I still have, I mean, whatever they want to use. I can just Yennefer's Invocation it, because Nilfgaard is bullshit. They can just crack cards whenever they feel like it. Um, the one thing I should probably keep in mind is that I want to get a Diviner to purify Donimir. But other than that, I think we're pretty okay. So there we go. Ask and you shall receive. So let's get rid of that heavy cavalry. We get Angoulême again. I really want to try, but I... Ah, it's too risky. It's it's really too risky. So let's just get rid of Angoulême. We get another heavy cavalry. So let's get... Yeah, okay. That's fine. That is absolutely fine. Our opponent goes first, because so we can play rather reactively. Um, I could grab that knight, but I don't think it's that useful yet. So let's just use Glynis. Because usually Northern Realms doesn't have any big removal options. Because um, even if they play two archers now, they're not going to get anything out of that. Um, ooh, I can actually grab that if I want to. That would be nice. So let's just use Artorius. Should get a Duchess Informant. Yep, there we go. Um, let's put that over here so their frigate doesn't really automatically trigger. And then put ours over here. That's how neat. We, we basically stole their, their engine card. It doesn't seem like they're using too many siege engines. Um, so I think the, that was the right call to not use Angoulême. It's not a good match to actually showcase the uh, Angoulême tripleness, but uh, it is still a very good uh, deck regardless from Angoulême, as you can see. So, 
Um, we get that. Do I, I don't double up on the boats, right? Because that would be stupid. So let's just use Bratens. Because um, we want to cook something. Your name, young man. There we go. And put that in between here. And that also fills up their row rather nicely. And the Temerian Drummer. And then just get that volunteer on the field. And we doubled up our points compared to them right now. So that is rather nicely, I would say. And then we get the first archer mobilization right on top of that. So that was what we expected. And we get a double archer. Okay, I could actually use one of those if I wanted to. Uh, I could lock one and then grab the other. They don't really go for high points usually, so um, let's just lock this archer. And that gives us one that is also at six points. And then um, Yennefer's invocate the other one. Yeah, I just made that into a verb, so there we go. Uh, and then we could actually just damage something as well. Um, let's just do that and get another volunteer on the field. Because remember, the more volunteers we have on our field, the bigger Shalemar is going to be. And that is just something that I really, really want to prove here. Ah, that's too bad that we don't have Coup de Grasse anymore. That was too bad that we don't have Coup de Grasse anymore, because I would have gone for that Philippa then. Um, okay, rather nicely. Um... Doesn't really seem like that much of a problem. I think I might as well just... I mean, that drummer is still doing good work, so I don't really need to get rid of that. Um, so I think I'm just going to play a Roderick. So let's just play a Roderick. Let's put that also on this side of the field. There we go. And we get Oneromancy. Definitely doing that. And now with Oneromancy, we could play... That... No... No, I really shouldn't. I shouldn't play Angoulême, but I really want to. I, it's probably not gonna know. It's not gonna not gonna be good. So let's just play the Duchess Informant. Play that on that row as well, filling that row completely and grabbing another archer and damaging that one and getting another volunteer. There's a lot of things to do when you're playing Assimilate. <laughs> Thank you for all of that. And we're not done just yet. Because I could even get um, Angoulême by accident here. And remember, we still have another Oneromancy. Um, left, right, left, right. So that's another drummer. That's not that much of a problem. I could just grab one of the volunteers and see what I can get from the deck. Yeah, let's just do that. Because, uh, yeah. It's not really doing what it should be doing here. And we get another <laughs> the other archer. That is hilarious. So that's that. And then the freight. So that was pretty lucky that we got something really useful out of that. But um, yeah, that's the way Simulate works. But I'm still a bit sad that we didn't get an Angoulême. I'll, I'll do one more after this to see if we can actually grab one. Because this seems to be going our way uh, rather nicely. Um, what other fanciness do we still... I could just use Angoulême now. Um, hmm. What would be the best option here? I could grab another one. Another Duchess Informant? Wait, I'll just play the Imperial Diviner first because she also has Insimilate. Uh, and let's get just rid of one of the, the Doom status effects. Let's boost this bad boy. And then just start damaging the drummer again. There we go. Don't really need that. Ah, and I think I forgot. Did I use the volunteers? I kind of forgot. There's so much things to do. That was pretty nice, but that kind of killed this whole entire board. Um, oh, okay. Well done. Um... <laughs> That was weird. Let's use Omeromancy next. And play... Don't use Angoulême. Don't use Angoulême. No, Angoulême is not going to be worth it. Uh, play another Duchess in four Everyone months. And Everyone. then we can put another boat down and put that over here. 
and we can play a little bit volunteer, use some more charges from the archers, and that's basically it. This deck is a lot of fun when you get this going. Um, I'll probably get Bloody Baron on Glynis. But even with that, it doesn't really matter too much. Now I need to reset the unit, by the way. I have no idea what I would reset. So their frigate was re-enabled. Uh, but other than that, I'm just going to use Peter Sai. <laughs> Peter Sai Gwynleaves. Uh, put that over there, I suppose. There's not much I can do otherwise. Uh, play the frigate again, play the frigate again. And that's good. That's good. And then the next turn, we're going to get one hell of a Shailmar, by the way. We all have a Karate Heat Wave on Glynis. But uh, I, w I, w I just want to quickly do this. And there we go. A 22 point Shailmar. Assimilate works. But I want to, I really want to show off Angoulême. We didn't really get to show off Angoulême. So let's do one more unless this totally doesn't work. And I'll show you a clip of how I show, used Angoulême before while I was testing. Because that was also a really fun one. And we get exactly what we bargained for. Another V. You get a Thunderbolt. You get a Thunderbolt. This is going to be interesting because... It all depends on how lucky you are with this uh, with this draw, um, but yeah, um, I could keep some of the removal. Especially, I think the um, the tourney joust is going to be interesting. I don't really need to purify anything. There's no need to put anything back into the deck just yet. Uh, but yeah, purifying anyway. Yeah, okay, that was really really bad. Um, Let's start off slow. I think I'm going to keep the big hitters for the next round, because that's the point where they start to push. Because usually against V, you also lose that first round. But, Andrega Larva. Andrega Larva. Larva. I'm going to steal that. I'm going to definitely steal that. So I still have Broughton, so that's pretty good. So let's just use Onneromancy. Grab Coup de Grasse. And... Grab that and drag out larva. I put that right over here. I could even take out the remaining one. Uh, no, I'm gonna keep that lock for something else because the Andrega larva isn't the big problem here. And I can use that to actually get another Andrega larva if I wanted to. Um, so that's just simple Broxa. A simple Broxa. Um, let's just use the Slave Hunter. I was going to put us a point ahead again. And yeah, that Andrea Larva is just, just bleeding, but as long as we can keep it alive, that's not a problem at all. Okay, the Slizzard. The Slizzard is a consume unit. We want to get rid of that as soon as possible. The key to beating V is getting rid of their consume options. So assassination on the Slizzard makes sense. Um, I'm going to lose that Andrea Larva. It's not that much of a problem. Um, and I can just keep the damage on the, the Slave Hunter there. There we go. Sacrificed one for the other and we get another Slizzard. But this time I'm just going to take it out with the... Um, yeah, with the collar. Because I can lock it and then just uh, destroy it outright. With the Slave Hunter. Um, I could use Bratens now. Deck is a bit weird at the moment, but I'll use Angoulême now and see if we can grab uh, or, or scare them away. So we just play the Haunt scenario card. I think I called it Nightmare before. It's Haunt. Sorry about that. It is definitely Haunt. Because we want to grab that first round. If we can grab that first round, we have final say at the very end. And they're really, really hesitant to play their V. I mean, I would as well. We don't get any Death Wish units over here, so let's just keep to the Tourney Joust then, I suppose. Yeah, let's just keep to the Tourney Joust. Play that over there. Don't want to overplay it too much. And now we get the Noon Rate, which is good, because the Noon Rate is a Death Wish unit. So let's use Bratens now. And benefit from that Death Wish unit. 
There we go. And that's that wish. And we get the um, bar guest. And the bar guest can actually just eat Angoulême. Because that means that we can use this turn to actually grab uh, Angoulême and put her back into the deck if we need to. We're 26 points ahead. That means that even with a double V, they most likely... So V starts at 8, so that's 10. And then 11, 13 is 23. So that's not going to help. So I'm pretty certain... Okay, so we get Mata Huri. But that's not gonna... No, I can pass. I can pass. Yeah, they're gonna be down in cards. Yeah, let's do that. Because they don't have a way of getting 21 points in one go now. Uh, well, 22 actually, if they want to. So now we're gonna get a V. Or we're even gonna get Ihuara Quarks. Okay, that's actually pretty okay. I don't know what it's going to pull. Artorias, okay. It is what it is, I suppose. The rest of my good cards are still in my hand. And now we get Alzu's double cross, and that's going to be V again. And he has to consume it. Because I... Wait a second. Oh, I think they misplayed. Because it's only on that wish that that ability is triggered. So I don't think... We'll see it on the deck count. Oh, it did. Did it just go over there? Oh, no, it didn't. It's still in the graveyard. They misplayed. So <laughs> we kind of fucked them over that way. That wasn't very smart, now was it? Um, okay, so we have a few funny bones here. We have the cards that we really need to. And they're going to play Haunt now. That is actually fine. Because as I said before, I'm going to play Asire first. And then put Angoulême back into the deck. As we're used to. So at least it's going to be double Angoulême. It's not the extreme var variety there, but um, it's still a very, very fun play. We get the Beast. That is a prime target for me to imposter. Um, but it is going to 6. I should just grab it already. Um, although it is wasting my imposter on that. Although I think they have a lot of tutors, so they most likely won't be able to do much. Um, so right now we still have... Ah, there we go. We got her. Yeah. I think they realized what was going on. So we would have been able to play Angoulême again, but they misplayed by leaving V on the board. Uh, which didn't cause it to go back into the deck. So the only, the only thing that went back to the deck... Because we saw it go up, but I think that was on Aeromancy that went back. So, uh, yeah, that was a very bad play. I'll show you one more example of how good this is. So in this match, I played against a Nilf Guardian deck. So it's not really a mirror, it was against the Soldier uh, archetype kind of deck. But in the last round, they... Um, I already knew that they played Ball in the very first round. I kind of played over that. I, was, I managed to go into round 3. I used Angoulême to play Masquerade Ball on my side. I don't have a scenario in this deck specifically because I know that tactic could be used against me. So I specifically don't use Portal in this deck to avoid getting countered with that. And what happened was my opponent used their coup de grace to actually copy my Angoulême. But of course nothing happened. But I still had coup de grace in my hand. So that was one of the examples where I used Angoulême three times without actually having to use a Decoy or an Assire. Because at that point I used Coup de Grasse to destroy that Angoulême, get Masquerade Ball again on my side, and I basically had a double ball in the same round. Which of course meant that my opponent forfeited. And just, well not really forfeited, it just closed the connection. But it's a really, really good example of how strong this deck can be. Even though it is a bit meme I admit that, but it is really, really fun to play, uh, to play especially in this meta, especially if you can just take out uh, Vi players like this guy. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at the deck one more time. 
So this is it. Again, you can check it out in the comment section. Uh, well, not in the comment section, in the description down below. The link to the Play Gwent website is right there with a bit of a description of how you should best play this. So it is a simulate, but with a lot of ways to take out high powered units and of course putting them to your use because it is a simulate. And then Angoulême is a powerhouse if you manage to grab those very powerful scenarios, which should happen. I mean, it's happening 80% of the time. I mean, that Northern Realms um, match we just saw was a downside to it but uh because there weren't any scenarios in there i'm pretty sure i didn't even try but i was pretty sure that there wasn't any in there but even without that uh this deck is very powerful you have a lot of ways to getting cards from your deck from your opponent's deck and just put them to your use so play smart and you will get out on top uh vi is a Bit of an annoying thing to play against if you're lucky you can get something happen like what i just ha had happen but there's a lot of ways you can try to get the card out of the deck regardless good luck with that let me know in the comment section what you think of this deck because there's a lot of ways we can improve this i'm sure but it's uh one of my attempts to make a nilf guardian deck that is still fun to play and doesn't just rely on using lockdown to win or and, and just brute force to win and that's it for today. What do you think about the Triple Angoulême deck? Do you want to play it as well? Just let me know in the comment section down below because any feedback I am really, really appreciate. And that's what we're here for after all, to help each other out. So thank you guys enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode of Grand Edge. Goodbye and stay nutty.